All right. Welcome, everybody. I'm really fortunate to have Mr. Bill Carmen in today for an interview. Uh, Bill, hello. Say hi. Hello. Uh, hi. I, I, I can't thank you enough for doing this. I really appreciate you doing this, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, before we get rolling, I'm going to ask our audience, since we do this as a kind of a, a gift to the industry, um, please give us a like if you if you can. It's always helpful to build our audience. Bill, yes. I looked at a lot of your work over the last few years. I looked at a lot of it over the last few hours <laughs> putting this to together. Incredibly enjoyable. And um, I have a, a couple of things that I've taken away. And I've looked at very different bios of yours. And I'm gonna I'm gonna read the first one because it's like really really straightforward. Uh, earning both a Bachelor of Fine Arts and a Master of Fine Arts from Brigham Young University in Provo, Bill Carmen has a long history of exhibiting across the country, including California, Utah, New York, and Massachusetts. Carmen has won numerous awards for his artwork and illustration, including several awards from Spectrum the Council of Advancement and Support of Education, and the Society of Illustrators in New York. His clients include, and this is a really brief, brief bio, and I know you have a very long list of clients, I include uh, Random House, Lucas Arts in Entertainment, uh, uh, Avid uh, Publications, and NPR. And I thought that I looked at that, and I, I walked away with that, and I thought, first of all, he has a master's in fine art, and a BFA in fine art and uh, BFA in uh, BFA in visual communications illustration. Okay. I don't know. You're, you're I, gonna, I don't know who wrote you're, that. You're going to have to correct this. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's, that's one. I, I did not write that one. <laughs> okay. It so I pulled the it case. from the web, but, uh, 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 and I did that for a purpose because I thought, okay, that's pretty dry. Here's the second one. And this is this I find fascinating. Bill Carmen was born on the floor of his house in Seoul, Korea, by a 90-pound Korean mother with only a midwife as witness. Bill weighed 11 pounds and 14 ounces. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really giggling about that. That was me, yes. Uh, the world still wonders how that tiny woman ejected such a large mass of boy with no trouble at all. The result was the physical improbability of a perfectly round head. Okay, so I've witnessed that head. And uh, you're a great looking guy, Bill, but I <laughs> think it's interesting. I've been looking at what's been running around inside of that head and what's been, been produced inside of that head. And it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, that, round, that round head is a complete uh, disguise of wonder and it's really fabulous what what I, i've spent i spent a good four or five hours just perusing through your wonderful book which i said i had two and i and i i have to tell you the reason i said i had two of these things is because this one i was perfectly crisp i had to like break the binding to open it it was like so crisp and inside it this is you never know what happens Two beautiful little Jeff Love uh, uh, illustrations fell out of it. Uh, oh, which were from what a surprise, right? You know, um, my uh, book had babies. <laughs> that's right. You spawn, you spawn more brilliance. Um, so anyway, um, I remember. I know that this, this. I think this one may have come from. Judging from that, probably came from the Illustration Academy. Um, the original one, I think I got at uh, Spectrum. Yeah. Well, you know, what's interesting is that that, that bio I, I wrote, is, it's a briefer bio than I actually have. And the reason I said the perfectly round head thing is because I walked into a convenience store once, you know, oh, and, yeah, right and I went up to pay and the, the, the cashier guy said, he just stared at me, looked at me, said, <laughs> dude, you have a perfectly round head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do you respond? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I guess it's, that's a good thing. <laughs> And so yeah. that's where that that's where that came from. Well, the 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 perfection on the uh, exterior is a, a great mask for what's in the interior. Um, I I have had the joy of going through 
the book, your website, just grabbing images online and pulling just amazing imagery. Um, and it was it was really fun to to be able to pair, to be able to look at the book. I I guess in a perfect world, I would have taken a week and I would have photographed everything out of the book and um and and been able to do it the old fashioned way. But I just pulled everything from your website and from what's online. Almost mm -hmm. everything was there. The book is uh, is absolutely brilliant. The only thing that's not is um, imagery from the Bird's Home, the art of um, B Bill Carmen. And Bill Carmen right there is invisible. You can't see it. It's in, it's in red. And so that's the only imperfection in the book right there. It, it, yeah. I've always had trouble promoting myself. Yeah, it, you're pretty you're pretty shy about it there. Yeah. All right. So uh, you grew up in California. You had a um, uh, sounds like you had a childhood kind of like my own. Just, you know, you were out on your own in the daytime, uh, traveling with friends and playing games and imagining things, uh, creating your own worlds. And um, I, I, you know, that very similar. We're very similar in age. Um, and I think that was kind of, um, you know, I, 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 I interviewed, uh, Troy, Bob Heindel's son recently, Troy Heindel, when I was doing an interview on uh, Bob and we, we talked about our childhood about, the, it was so romantic. It was like our parents said, okay, go outside, just be back when it, you know, be back before we're really worried about you. And the uh, street lights come on. Yeah, that's, that's right. When we were really young, they said when the street lights come yeah. on, it's time to come in. Yeah. yeah. Well, we lived in a rural area, so there were no street lights. Oh, but it, well. <laughs> but it was like, don't wander off too far, right? Yeah. Uh, so well, yeah, I was in the suburbs. And so we had we had the street light thing when we were very young. Of course, teenagers, we did we stayed out longer, but but that's right. Yeah, we there was there was no staying inside. Um, especially in California. We or out all year, all year long, you know, there was nothing to do with, I mean, you know, we don't have, we didn't have the games, computers and all that. We had three TV channels, you know, and right. Um, so well, when did you start, was, when did you start drawing? Well, that, that's the only, that's the only reason that we, I, I ever stayed inside was, was drawing and reading. Yeah, and, um, but, you know, as a kid, I, I was too antsy to do it for long. Um, as I started to get older and became a teenager, then I, you know, I drew more and more. And, um, but, you know, be, before that, it was nonstop all day long, riding bikes for miles and miles and miles to where we weren't supposed to be, you know, and um, I always I catch exactly. bats at night. And so, you know, outdoors, we were always outside. Yeah, me too. And I, I, I always interject that, uh, not until I was put in a position. I I, I moved cross country when I was um, uh, in sophomore in high school, sixteen years old, and um, I never drew before then. Never, uh, and I, I I was around art obviously my whole life. I mean, all my dad's friends they, they were all artists, and the thing that I took away from it was that looked really hard, <laughs> and it looked like they were they worked at it so hard. I was like, I'm not into that. I was I was like, you know, I was going to play. I was, you know, I'd rather be on a football field or doing, you know, playing tennis or whatever. Um, uh, sports was was my thing when I was a kid, and not till I was put in a situation where I was by myself, and that's when, mm -hmm. the, when the drawing started. And so, did you have like, was your high? Did your high school have you know good art classes or was there? No, not really. I, I mean, I started earlier than that. Um, copying comics and things like that you know I saw the cup I, I had no artists in my family no one to really you know draw any inspiration from in that way but I loved things like comic books and um and and later on you know albums and album cover design that was the thing that really got me oh yeah out. but I com I copied comics as a you know kid my friend and I um we uh did things like that we would spend hours just doing that we would spend hours you know writing our own plays and and performing them into a recorder you know and so it was uh it was a creative sort of thing but you know i didn't start really seriously drawing until i discovered um album cover art in high school really what, what yeah. which what, which ones affected you the most well the first one that affected me was uh 
the Almond Brothers eat a peach. And, yeah. you know, it had the, the really cool little illustration on the cover of the truck with a, you know, peach in the bed, giant peach. But it's when he opened it up, you know, the inside was just full of, you know, detail and illustrations, the landscape and strange sort of surreal stuff going on. And I thought, oh my gosh, where does this come from? Who does this? You know, you know, uh, and then we, my friend and I talked about it. We were in a band together. And so we talked about, you know, and we both liked the art thing. And so we said, somebody's got to do this, right? I wonder if oh. they get paid and, you know, and. It was so creative. There was so much great work done. Um, yeah. That was the... Roger Dean and, and Patrick Woodruff and, you know, all the really great album art guys, you know, I just. Yeah, um, the kind of really, you know, I, I knew what my dad was up to. I mean, I had an idea. I knew he did something really well. I didn't know mm -hmm. exactly understand it that much. Mm -hmm. People seem to follow him around and, you know, got a lot of accolades. And I, um, not until my own peers, my high school friends, discovered that he had done the 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 Who cover, the Tommy the Rock opera. Mm -hmm. When you opened it up, that was like all of a sudden it was different for me. It was yeah. different the way I saw him, right. you know. And I I remember him coming back from New York one day, and he was meeting with the manager of the Rolling Stones, and he had all this like paraphernalia from the Rolling Rolling Stones, and he was going to do. He never did do any work for them, but he was. They they they, they talked about it, and I was just thinking. Man, he must be doing something really cool. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like uh, my dad is cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was it was interesting. Um, so you went? Did you have an idea of what you wanted to do in high school, or, or when you went well, to? High school? I mean, okay. So for me, you know, a lot of the guys that were around me, you know, they they were thinking in terms of career. And so but a bunch of them went to business schools, you know, and, you know, San Diego State, Chico and, and places that, you know, they, they just wanted to get a career, make money. And so it was all about, you know, making money. But for me, it was always either music or art in some way. I didn't have any idea really what that meant or what could lead to that. But, you know, I sang in high school. And like I said, I was in a couple of bands and and. um so I got to perform and, you know, it was a rush and, and, you know, I thought, oh, well, music, I'd love to do that. But I think I was always better at the art thing, you know, um, and I wasn't a very disciplined musician. Um, but, I, you know, I became much more disciplined in the art thing. So I, so I ultimately decided, yeah, I'm going to try it out. And, you know, community college, I went to community college in Harris that actually had a pretty good art program. Um, high school, no, we, uh, the, one of the football coaches taught, um, the art class and he couldn't draw. Um, <laughs> and he's not, he, he would give us ditto sheets of all these different noses and say, yeah, just draw those, you know, and, um, things like that. So, um, it wasn't until, you know, uh, community college that I thought, oh, some people are doing some pretty cool stuff out there. And then, you know, I went on to college and I discovered that um, since back then, you know, uh, we were Mormon and my my parents are very Mormon, you know, they said, we'll pay for you to go to, you know, at least partially pay for you to go to Brigham Young University um, if you decide to go there. So I went out and checked it out and I discovered uh, James Christensen and he was teaching there. And so it was a kind of a perfect pairing. Plus, I, you know, I did a lot of graphic design. It was a visual communications program. So it was, there's was an umbrella program. And I did a lot of, you know, graphic design studies. And that's what I did when I got out of school. I worked as a graphic designer as I, as I built up my skills in illustration. There was not many students that come out of school, especially back then, and could compete in, you know, in the illustration market, but just Right. The skills weren't there. there yet. There's not. There's not now either. <laughs> yeah, and even now, even now, it's 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 tough. And so, um, you might be able to get started, but you know, competing. But yeah, you can't. You know, every know, once in a while, there's, a, there's an anomaly, but um, yeah. um, but very very few. Um, so yeah, I worked as as you know, you know, designer, art director, creative director, um, at several different places. I 
I got to do freelance work for, like I said, you know, Lucas Arts, designing underwater theme parks in Japan and theme theme designed malls in the, in the Middle East, and so you know, skate parks. So I I worked for for Lucas Arts as a contractor, um, and I you know the you know theme park thing just just sort of fell in my lap. Hmm. I had no idea how to work and design a theme. I worked with a bunch of <laughs> architects in a in a really incredible warehouse full of props from Ewoks movies and Star Wars movies and things. Wow. I had giant blaster guns over my head, and you know they sat me at a table with all brand new equipment and a, you know, like a hundred markers and no computer back then. We had one computer, a, you know, one of those boxy Macs, and that was reserved for the graphic designer. Um, I think it had maybe like four kilobytes or something. We thought that was massive, <laughs> you know, and, um, but I, I just interpreted architectural designs and I did cutaway illustrations and POV illustrations and learned on the fly, you know, um, the thing is that I tell my students too, is if you're prepared, you know, and things fall in your lap, then you can, you know, succeed. If you're not prepared, then, you know, never happen. Did you consider, I mean, did you draw pretty well at the time? I I drew, yeah, pretty well, probably better than I do now, even. Um, <laughs> now, I... I don't, I doubt that. I, I drew in a certain way really well, and I and I could interpret things and think things through, and... Um, right. that, 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 were, that's a skill nobody's ever sorry they don't, uh, that, that they developed it, you know, and it's just something that will always serve you. Um, so I, I, I the, the, my reason for asking that question, I, another question is like to kind of tie this together. You have a, uh, uh, MFA in fine arts. Um, did that come later or did, I mean, did you go back to school for that, for teaching? Um, uh, how long have you, cause I mean, you, 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 I think when we spoke last that you're, you know, going to be done with teaching in the next year or two. Um, but you've been doing it a pretty long time. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I, I went out and worked first. I had, I had family, you know, and um, we moved around a little bit. And so I went out and worked and for probably six years. And then I sort of thought, you know, I had the opportunity to teach a few things and, you know, community things and um, even part time uh, gigs. And so um, I thought, I want to go back and maybe I can build my skills as well as and prepare myself or, or at least have the degree for teaching. I'm not sure how much an MFA program actually prepares you to teach, but, um, but I did, I did go back and I decided to do a, a painting instead of an illustration. For one thing, back then there weren't many MFA illustration programs. Right. And they were generally on either coast and um, they were expensive and not really well known as far as, is that something you can do? Um, and I didn't hear about a lot of them, but I just figured, okay, I'm in this area. I had a job at the university. And so my tuition was free. So I thought, yeah, it was time to do it. And so I did get the MFA in painting. Um, I'm glad I did. It just opened my eyes to other kinds of things. But, you know, that figurative based art was always my first love. And, you know, illustration has, has always been and still is a great love of mine, even with all this crazy stuff that I do. Um, well, what, what um, at that time, like when you were leaving the MFA program or even during the MFA program, who were you who were your influences? What were you what were you looking at? What, what were you, well, you were probably looking at everything, but what were the things that you really were interested in? Okay, so when I first went into the uh, MFA program, I was battling with the faculty because I love Brad Holland's work. And, you know, they say, we want you to put away your illustration concerns and focus on this. So put away the, the annuals, you know, the Society of Illustrator annuals, all those kind of things, and focus on this side of things which really kind of put me off a little bit so I, I all the way through my program I kind of beat my head against the wall and, and you know it, thank goodness BYU was a, a more figurative program um, back then and you know still now um, and so 
it wasn't that difficult to sort of convince you know my faculty committee this is the direction I want to go but I I patterned a lot of things after after Brad Holland's work um I just you know loved what he did and it was close enough you know uh, you know technically and stylistically to um, some of the contemporary things going on that I could justify it and so so it's interesting that he was such a big sort of focus right at the beginning of my MFA degree it was so um, well, you, you picked it you picked the right individual I mean or, or a great individual to to follow I mean I think Brad is the well I'll use my father words my father's words about Brad he said he's just the best um, conceptual illustrator whoever whoever worked <laughs> and, and and that was exactly yeah, it you know conceptually I I you know I related in so many ways and I was able to then sort of defend my position, you know, to these hardcore fine art people, you know, um, his work is smarter than most of the contemporary work we see out there, you know, right. um, back then. Yeah, so. And he had the, he had the facility, he had the facility to, uh, as a great image maker. I mean, absolutely. He was, work communicated. I mean, not at all, man. He, really, he still does. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So that was really interesting. And, um, I was one of, I have a, just looking at a photograph and it made me sad because it was the last year that we did the Illustration Academy and I have a photo of my father and Brad and Gary Kelly sitting at the table together. And it's <laughs> like, it's like, does that say it all or what? You know, it's like, uh, oh my gosh. Well, that was, you know, the year I was going to get to teach with uh, Ian too. Right. Right. And it fell through. I was so bombed about that. No, well, that was actually the year. That was the year before. Um, well, but, I mean, the the year next, the next year, I was going yeah, to be able to teach come back with Ian. Yeah, that's when it, it all fell apart and it could didn't happen. You know, so it didn't fall apart. Uh, the virus fell apart. Yeah, well, yeah, the world <laughs> fell apart is what I imagine. <laughs> it, was, it was really interesting. I, I had people, Timmy and I, canceled. You know, it was most people paid for that program. You know, four to six months in advance, mm -hmm. and so in January. We started getting email messages from people that had signed up that were outside of our country saying, Can I get a refund? Because we can't travel. We can't, yeah. we can't get into the United States. Um, January, February. And when I canceled it, I remember immediately getting a call from Chris Payne. And Chris was like, Why are you canceling so so early? He said, We're not gonna, we're we're not gonna cancel the Hartford program. And I said, You are. <laughs> You, <laughs> you just don't know, don't know it yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He argued with me, and I go, "No, just, just, we'll get get back to me later on on that one because uh, it's coming." And everything uh, got canceled. Yeah, that's. Uh... And in, in in a way, you know, um, it doesn't. You know, it bothers me that we don't do it anymore because I loved it so much, and it was mm -hmm. such a great thing to be around everybody. And I hope that I can figure something out that is maybe a shorter version or something to right. do. It. And George is always after me about it and uh, the other instructors. And um, But it was kind of, you know, my dad and I started that and he's not here. So it's like, that's okay. That's a tough one. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's okay. You know, It'll I, never be the same, but, you know, no. it could could be something but I, else, but I, you know? I got that i got that photo of my father gary and and brad sitting there you know and it's like that's it's like that was kind of um i know that my father you know had a cane and you know he he was six he was exactly my age i am right now when we started the program oh wow yeah he was 16 was was there a glow over the table i mean you know was there <laughs> This glowing genius, <laughs> <laughs> the genius glow. Uh, uh, Bill Sinkevich, who said he wanted to, he came in for the end of that week, and he came in and he saw that, and he goes, "Man, I'm afraid to even go up there." <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a blast teaching with him too. He's, he's oh, great. wonderful man, just ama amazing guy, yeah. uh, amazing artist. Um, um, so. Uh, I know you I know you exhibit a lot. You you the painting world is important. The gallery world has been important to you. The illustration world has been important to you. 
do you see them how do you separate the two do you separate the two do you i mean how do you, how do you, how do you see difference well i did for a while i mean you know you, you kind of have to separate the two depending on what kind of illustration you're doing um any more no because i i do a certain kind of work and really the only illustration work i do now are people coming to me and say we need your particular kind of work and your kind of thinking um you know i just last year finished a an almost year long you know book pro uh, project for easton press the book hasn't come out yet um but it's a you know illustrated version of james joyce ulysses mm -hmm. and you know ulysses is a hard book um joyce period is is tough but um it was tough. And I think there's several reasons that came to me. One of them was because of my academic background and I could do the research and, you know, figure it out, but also by the, the unique, weird imagery I, I do suited the storytelling. And so, um, so now I, I really don't separate the two, except for in, in teaching, I sort of have to do that. Right. I mean, it's, right. uh, it's important, I think. Uh, and the illustration world in many ways is the same, but in so many more ways is just completely different. Hmm. And um, I, you know, so, so you, you have to separate and, and every, it seems like every year there's a new kind of thing that's thrown under the illustration umbrella. Right. Um, and either familiar, you know, familiarize yourself with it or, you know, students well, why can't we do this you know why can't we do that why can't i do web tunes why can't i you know um do character design and concept art that's one of the biggies right now right um sure. and so um and that's why you know i think there's a shelf life for every teacher that at a certain point you have to say i don't want to keep learning every new little thing that comes out in our way um well, you know that everybody has their place. You know, it's like, um, you know, my 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 father and Gary and uh, the people had been working for a long period of time as illustrators. That you know, my, my father was eighty three years old. The last academy, mm -hmm. uh, last year, and he couldn't begin to tell you how to get started as an illustrator. Yeah. He's the first person that could tell you how to make a better picture. Better picture. That's exactly. <laughs> that's exactly. And that has so, to be the focus of yeah, my teaching, so, is you know. Yeah. yeah. So the the value of that understanding, you have to go to, you have to go to the industry to get accurate current information. Yeah. You know, so you know people, you know, the importance of having, you know, guest speakers like Carla and, and Westbert and uh, you know people that are teaching right. character design that are working it. Um, uh, Lizard, like like Min Fu and John Nymeister, Rob Chandler, people that are teaching with us currently. It's like, you know, the workflow, the pipeline, the just the just the technology that they use. Um, that's that's all stacked on top of the picture, yeah. and and uh, you know the the embracing of technologies is the biggest part. It's like you know people. We have a two D character program, but most of the most of the instructors that are teaching with us have acquired 3D skills because it it's made their 2D work better, and yeah. uh, and even somebody like John Foster who's you know uh, just doing cover work or two dimensional illustration he's you know he's he's embrace uh, creating reference in in uh, 3D applications yeah. um, uh, just well, so. Yeah, that's it's a, I mean, I, it's a great point. You know, I I had a couple of guest speakers come to the class from Industrial Light and Magic, and um, you know, went through their whole spiel. At the end, there were questions, and I asked one question, you know, of them because I know my students wanted to know. I said, if you could choose one program for students to learn, if they wanted to go in the direction of your business, and these guys were guys working on the Star Wars stuff, so it was live stuff, and um, and they said. If there's one program that would be and for students, they, they said it would be Blender. Right. And, and it's, it's free for one thing. You know, the basic program is free. So students can afford it. And it just can be the foundation for so many things. Um, 
you know, we use 3D modeling in everything. And so um, I found well, that really interesting. I, I think that's pretty much what what our our instructors would tell tell our students also. Mm -hmm. You know, the the free part's great, but it's uh, it was easier easier for them to wrap their head around it and 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 to start there. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's it's a simpler program, something like Maya or something like that. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Hey, um, do you remember when we uh, at the beginning we said that at some point we're going to take a short break? Let, let's do it. Let's okay. let's let's take a very short break. Um, um, I will uh, I will stay here and wait for you to return. Okay. I will return shortly. I think I'll take advantage of this uh, bills away. Uh, <laughs> oh. While he's gone, uh, his the three or four hours I spent looking at his book, looking at his work, was absolutely uh, incredibly enjoyable, um, and uh, I think I got a huge benefit from it. Um, and, and I know it makes a lot. Of, it's a lot easier for me to, to to make to deliver a talk that way. But there's something about digging in. To an artist like that and just a deep dive and so many things you start to make connections that you didn't you know it was maybe a little bit more on the surface um i've looked at a lot of bill's work over over the years and but never like as intensely as i had in the last 48 hours so i i encourage that for anybody you know pick it pick an artist and you know hopefully you'll make a good choice. Um, that's, that's one of the more difficult things. I, um, you know, defining who, who to look at, you know, rely on somebody, you know, ask somebody that you rely on their judgment, uh, uh, with artists and, and ask them who you should be looking at for influence, but taking a deep dive into to somebody's work like that is very, very helpful. Bill, you're back. I'm back. Cool. Well, I think I I I was just uh, giving them a suggestion of how beneficial it is to take a really deep dive into somebody's work, and uh, I was relating to me, you know, spending the last couple of days really looking at a lot of your work. Um, I've seen a lot of it before, but it's just something you start thinking about. Where did this come from? You start thinking about mm -hmm. what your influences were. Um, well, that's that's an interesting point to a deep dive you know because that's something i try to teach too is that you know um we all look at pictures right we all, and, and especially with the online thing we look at pictures but you know what i try to get them to do is read pictures you know and and spending that more intense kind of focus you know uh, whether it's something as you know basic as composition and you know shape and things but also yeah what is the motivation you know what um where does it come from but it's so much different studying and reading, you know, an image no. than just what, looking you know, at it and going, oh, cool. You know, well, on the, on the illustration side, too, it's really difficult to look at illustration and not know what the outcome is for. And it's like, does this image, you know, try to figure out what it what it's for if you if you don't see it immediately? And that was great. That was great help having the book and being able to go through and look at and say, you know, see what the assignments were for. I know yeah. ju like judging a you know, judging that the society of illustrators are spectrum. I mean, you got to see, you got to see what the, the job was, you know, you got to, is this functional? Uh, does it work? Excuse me one second. I'm just getting over a cold here. So um, I'm going to keep, keep moving forward here. I may have to stop to cough every minute. That's just fine. <laughs> As long as the stupid dog, ah, hang on a second. I think my coughing is causing the dog to bark. <laughs> um, he, he's reacting to he's reacting to me. 
you know, it was silent. And so I, I opened the door again to get some air flowing through here, you know, but then as soon as I opened it, the dog started barking, or as soon as you coughed. So I'm blaming it on you this time. It's me. That's a, he, he's answering me. Um, so um, I got a couple other questions, just general questions that, that um, number one, I, we've talked about it. I know you have a family. Yes. Um, talk to me a little bit about your life as an artist and raising children and um, anything that, that, that you can bring to light. Well, yeah, I had a family and I had, you know, fairly young. Um, while I was still an undergraduate, I got married and then, you know, my first daughter came, you know, a little over a year after I graduated. So I have four kids, but, you know, one of the things that I had to learn how to do is navigate that. And if I wanted to be an illustrator, you know, you have to put time in a table, right? But with so many kids and so much stuff going on, where do you put that time in? If you're not, you know, making a living at it right at the beginning, then, you know, when do you do that? And so I worked during the day as a graphic designer, like I said, or, you know, art director and, and came home, spent time with the kids, did all that stuff, taking them to games, you know, dinner or whatever. And then after they went to bed is when I spent the time at the table. So there were, you know, a lot of nights that I, you know, only slept four hours, and um, especially when I went back to graduate school, you know, um, I had, you know, very little sleep, but you sort of have to do what you'd have to do, right? Um, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, I switched my schedule to working at night, um, and I'd work all night and uh, be awake. My wife was a designer at Hallmark Carts, and <laughs> I would be awake when... Um, when she was getting up and uh, get the kids up, take them to school and come home and go to bed. <laughs> yeah. uh, I did that. I did that for like 14 or 15 years. Um, and uh, it, it, it was tough. You had to make time uh, to do your client work or have your conversations. Sometimes you were, you were just tired. I mean, it was just, it's just how it is. Um, it sure helps to have a good partner in life, you know, that that's one thing I've always had. So, um, me too. Um, best, uh, I feel like the, the very best decision I've ever made in my life. And, um, it, it really helps. I mean, it was, um, it, it she was tolerant to what I was doing. And that, that, that's, I mean, and that, that real, I mean, I think she had trust me. She knew I worked hard. In fact, she said to me <laughs> out of, it was actually out of anger. And I still repeat it a lot because I still find it very funny. Um, you know, she said, you could have been good at anything with the amount of time you put into this. <laughs> yeah. <that's nice. laughs> yeah. I, I feel that. Yeah. It's, it's so, totally true. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, but there, there's there's a lot there's a lot of hurdles to the that an artist has to uh, embrace anyway. You know, it's like you could I I see wildly talented people fail all the time, yeah. and it's very common actually. Um, the ones that want to do it the most are the ones that end up doing it. They figure every they figure everything out you know they they're they're aware of oh they can't fail financially they can't fail mm -hmm. relationships maybe it's you know whatever it is that you know family they they manage to get through all of that and um the ones that are around for a long time seem to have dealt with it all yeah they they found out where because you have to sacrifice somewhere right and so they you find out where and when to sacrifice and give up this in order to get this and not, you know, sacrifice something else. And so it's that balancing, juggling thing that that um, those are the people that I think that you know, succeed in it. And um, at least that I've seen. Um, I, 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 uh, I won't I'll say one of the names, but not the other. But I was at a, a an icon convention and uh, I saw an argument just beginning between a couple a couple of my 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 kind of heroes and friends and just it, it was kind of happening at our table and one of the artists was asking Gary Kelly uh to contribute time to an organization uh. and Gary just looked at him and said um, no 
He said, I'll, I'll give you money. I'll give you uh, artwork. You can use my artwork. He said, but um, I'm not going to get into this. I'm not going to get into taking time away from my studio time. Yeah. So I, I've done that with my family and I feel bad about it. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not about to give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> it was, and it made it just cut him off at the knees. <laughs> well, I might hear that, you know, they, you know, how his personality, you know, ha, you know, lets him say it one way, you know, maybe yeah. I'd say it a different way, but you know, you have to make those decisions or, you know, it just falls apart and unravels, you know, and, and you can't say yes to everything. There was a time when I tried to, you know, I think we all go go through that we try to say yes to everything every job every you know um we feel that's the way to build a career i have to say yes to everything but it just can't work that way you know um and especially i, I found now you know as i slow a little bit you know and as i have eye issues and things like that that um there's more and more things i have to you know let go of yeah. um, if i want to stay active I think it's really important for young artists to recognize that, you know, this is a, it's a marathon and it's, 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 it's beyond a marathon. I mean, it's just something it, it's, it's part of your life. It goes on, it will go on. You know, I, I, one of the, you know, watching my father age, watching him, his career. And he was very happy uh, at the end of his life I, I'm, because he, he felt uh, connected. He felt like, um, you know, people were still interested in his artwork mm -hmm. and he was still making work. And, you know, it's like, now he told me, he's like, God, I can't, I can't imagine like just quitting and not doing anything. He goes, I don't know what that would be like. You know, my whole life has been about chasing and making something and just stopping doing, doing that. And and he, the other thing too, it's like, he actually even said this to me about the Academy at one point, he goes, you sure you want me to even be there? I'm like, are you kidding me? Of course I want you to be there. He goes, he goes, I have no relevance at all. And I'm like, I don't think you really see it the way other people see it. But he was well, talking about what we were talking about. Like, you know, he wasn't a digital guy. He didn't know. I mean, he didn't know how to tell somebody to get a, how to get a job or who to work for or what art directors were there. He didn't know any of that. Um, he had experienced it all. He knew it all at his time. But uh, he didn't feel relevant. And, 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 and being relevant is a really important thing as an artist. <laughs> um, well, you know, he, the, I don't know if you remember the first time I met him was at one of the early Spectrum Live things. Mm -hmm. And um, I still have a photo of, you know, that, that first meeting that, you know, that we met. And I, I believe it was you that, you know, introduced us. Um, and, you know, I started to babble, uh, you know, cause you know, he'd been up here for so long and you know, I was finally meeting him and I, I, I couldn't, and I said, I'm sorry, I'm, you know, babbling, but you, you, you know, been such an influence and still are, you know, and I, and I, I swear I could see him sort of, you know, get bigger almost, you know, um, <laughs> as this, he had this connection, you know, in, in that way. And um, I feel like, you know, we had a connection ever since then. But, you know, he, it, it's not a, you know, I think he stands as an icon and, and, you know, people like him that this is what, you know, where you can be, you know, no matter what time period it is, um, that he, he's a shining example of, if you do this, this is what you can be. Right. And so, you know, for me, that's what it always was. And not only just, you know, as an illustrator and artist, but also as a teacher, you know, the, the past academies, the past, you know, um, it wasn't called that back then. What was it called? An illustration Academy. Yeah. Was it called that back then too? When they. Oh, started? the illustrator's workshop. Yeah. That's what. It was. Yeah. That was um, my education. Uh, you know, that was, that was, I was fortunate to be at the right time hmm. that I, that, that I could go to those. And um, they they were they were good. They were real glitzy. Um, yeah. You know, there weren't. You know, nobody was doing demonstrations or there. Yeah, there yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was all about them. You know, <laughs> this is but, what. I, but but that was out there. You know that okay. Right. 
there there are things where you can learn about illustration you know there were and and they were examples of that you know that was out there that those things started to pop up you know right um, they were the first right i mean that i know of uh, yeah, i'm sure i'm sure there was other things that uh you know well you could go back to the famous artist school sure yeah um but anyway the uh the idea of i've been stuck on the same uh, same side right once we i lost focus there for a minute um the um uh well i i think what i was going you know what i was getting to is like uh you, you reacting to you saying you know maybe teaching has run its course you know the relevance of it um again everybody has their their place like i mean a great picture maker could give could offer incredible information to somebody sure. but you got to go you got to go to somebody that's accurate and current um uh, um uh, that's that actively in, engaged right now to get what you need to learn about the industry yeah learn, i'm sorry go ahead i was gonna say learning about the industry it's always been that way i mean for yeah. me with the, with the with uh the illustration academy is how many people how many professionals can i bring to talk about what they do so people can just know that opportunity exists uh, I mean, well i think you know for me um because i have to wear so many hats at a smaller you know program you know as far as illustration goes uh i have to wear all the hats that i can you know can um and you know the way that education has changed you know upper you know uh you know, colleges, universities, um, it, it, that that's more of what I mean, that, that 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 model has changed so much over the years. You know, when I was in, in my heyday, that the university still meant something as far as getting a universal education and, and a foundation to build on. And that, and that allowed you to be a better artist and illustrator if you had that broader education to, because you, you, you learn to think, you know, I just tell my students that you're not taking all those different kinds of classes to learn how to be a, a mathematician or or a scientist or a writer. You're learning how to learn in different ways. And while we still do that to a certain degree, the focus is so much corporate now. And you know, get them in, get them out. You know, and and you know, focus on careers, focus on careers, focus on careers. And so I, I've really fallen out of love with academia. Hmm. And, and now I think there are much better ways to get that intense kind of education. You know, I still believe in a, in a broader education. So if you use, you know, college for that, I think that's great. But I think future, um, future generations are going to be, have the mindset exactly what you're talking about is to take control of their education yeah. and, and be, um, you know, customize it for themselves or what they need. Uh, yeah. I've been chasing that for a long period of time with our, you know, with art education, with, you know, what we've been doing with the academy and our online program. And it's like, it's very focused. It's very specific. It's not going to, it's going to be, it's going to give you the best information on that topic that, that's available. I mean, it's just, you we're yeah. using some of the best people from the industry, industry to teach those classes. And it's very direct. It's there to help people develop a portfolio in whatever direction they want to go in. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's about professionalism. That's yeah, I think that's the model that I'm most impressed with, you know, and in sending students that that have an education to now hone the specific part of right. it. Right. Well you just you just said it. Without the other part of it, it's still kind of useless. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's like how do you develop that wealth of knowledge, you know, uh learning enough about history, enough about literature, enough about how the world works to have something to say. Yeah. And in being able to problem solve, being able to 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 you that 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 well that you developed from maybe a liberal arts education um that might serve you on the uh well will serve you really well on the cognitive side of being an illustrator. Right. Um, yeah well, this piece here this piece here was one of the ones that got a gold award at the spectrum thing. Kind of different than a lot of my work. What do you think? A little bit. Uh, I remember having the pre-Raphaelites in mind when I worked on this. Well, the, uh, um, I mean, your your 
you know, asking questions I feel like I know the answer to, but uh, I, I do it for the purpose of the audience. And it's like just knowing who the pre-Raphaelites are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's important. Uh, that's, yeah, that's part of the, yeah, the yeah. education thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, but my, my father said that he would always say this about art education. He's like, he goes, I would always be worried about like, you know, I would look at an instructor uh, and, and think, okay, I'm going to learn from this person. And it's like, does this person have the ability to point me in the right direction? Right. Yeah. You know, and it, 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 it it's like, um, I use the example, uh, Gary, Gary Kelly sent me a, uh, sent me a book uh, one day. He was traveling. He saw the show and he goes, I thought you would appreciate this. Can you and, pause this slide though? Can you pause this slide? So it right doesn't go Yeah, okay. sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, no, just go ahead with your story. I'll okay, tell you. Okay, well, and and um, and it was it was an artist that I didn't think much of before that he sent it to me, and I thought, well, that's interesting. Gary was at the show, and he thought I'd be interested in this, and I started looking at it, and over time, I fell in love with that artist, and um, I fell in love with their work, and and I really started to enjoy the work, and. Um, it, it was Max Beckman and, oh. and, um, <laughs> I, I was telling that, telling, you know, explaining this whole thing to my father. He goes, yeah, wouldn't it be great that if you could trust when somebody like when Gary, Te Gary Kelly tells you an artist, I'm going to pay attention to it because I think so much of Gary Kelly. I was just thinking like, you know, and my dad related that to us. So it wouldn't be great that you could go to an art school and you trusted it that they were the ones who told you who to look at. <laughs> That's exactly. <laughs> not always that way. No, um, no, I did 100% not that way, you know, um, <laughs> that, that, you know, most of, most of the, you know, faculty that I know and have worked with over the years, they, you know, work with out, out of a, out of a book or, you know, out of an academic, you know, lexicon or something. They, they don't have the, the depth of experience, you know, um, that, you, that you would naturally trust. And so, um, that's one of the great things about being around people like that and about teaching with people, you know, like it, it, I did at the academy, that um, you, you kind of trust whatever they say, you know, when it comes to, <laughs> to art and, and and the illustration world. And so, yeah. well, well the, the reason, the, the, my 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 dad's reasoning for saying that is just like you know, um, he, he was like relating it to. He goes, I assume and. My father was a pretty well-read guy, but he said, I would assume when you go study literature that you have people telling you who to read. And he goes, when you go to art school, there should be qualified people there to tell you who to look at and who yeah. and, and that would influence you in the right direction. And I and I know there is. I know there's there's many that that do a great job of it. And I'm not I'm not there to beat up educators at art at art oh, education. No. Um, it's just, you know, it's, it, what's happened is it's, um, well, just take it off the table and say, doesn't really have any value anymore. Art schools become, it's way too expensive. And that's, and, yeah, that's, that's and it's the like, biggest problem. Yeah. You can't start a, the worst thing in starting a career. Can you imagine starting a career right now and owing a few hundred thousand dollars in a student loan? No. And then you're not a doctor. So, you know, so paying them off is going to take a, a lifetime at least, you know? And yeah. so. It's just, it's, it's a bad place for an artist to be. And so it's become, it's kind of become an exclusive club to go to a, a, a premier art and design college. And I think that's, you know, they, they, they present themselves as being inclusive and they're not. And if they're, <laughs> their, the pricing takes them out of the argument immediately. Uh, yeah. And so it's, well, it's that's, you know, I, again, I, you know, you know, having been in academia for so many, many years that, you know, um, it, it's still hard for me to, you know, grasp the notion of people teaching something that haven't excelled in that thing. And there are lots of faculty like that throughout the years, you know, I'm not being specific or anything like that, but it, it, that's just the way it happens. You come through an academic program, and if, you know, you graduate from a school school called Yale, you know, you can get an art job anywhere. And mm -hmm. so whether your work is, you know, really recognized or not, and or, or recognizing these very, very narrow circles, um, you know, 
So having a place you can trust is so important to me these days. The um, most, the most um, impactful part of that to me as I think about it is the value of an illustrator or a painter, a young emerging artist uh, developing some type of personal voice. Right. And uh, we push that. I mean, I, I think that's one of the strengths of our have always been of our program of like yeah. talking about how do you how do you enhance that? How do you accelerate that process? What is it that you do you can do to push that? And, and not just be so many students are just mimicking these days, right? Right. You online, you learn, you do, you do tutorials, or you're mimicking somebody else's stuff. But how do you develop that authentic voice where you come out, you know, and your life drawing thing is one of the best ways to do that. And drawing from life in a sketchbook, I really push that in my classes that go out, draw from life. You can't cheat there. You can't copy there. No. Your voice has to come out in those places. I, um, I, I, I had I listened to my father talk to students uh, about voice and, and creating personal voice. And he said, and, and he pointed it out um, at the time we had just listened to Gary Kelly and Anita Kuntz and they had all their process work all over the place. And he had a bunch of his there. And he said, I want you to look at all their first thumbnails. Yeah. And he said, all of this stuff is done from memory. He said, they're not, they're not influenced by another piece of artwork. They're not influenced by a piece of reference. This is something that they've turned inward that's coming from them. It's part of their life experience. It's the way they've, you know, uh, <clears throat> what they've read, what they've listened to, whatever. It's, it's, there's no influence there, but their own experience. Yeah. He yeah, said, she. Yeah, <laughs> you can't cheat. He goes, and that is the beginning of an artist using themselves as a library. And that's where personal voice lives. And I, when I, I, and I was, I was 32, 33 years old when I heard him say that. And I was like, geez, why didn't you tell me that like 15 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but, um, um, but I, I, I remember thinking how impactful that has to be mm -hmm. for, for a student. And then something I realized back to, again, I, I, I love education. I've devoted my life to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, my, this comes back extending that conversation a little bit further my father said it would be very hard for somebody that doesn't have a personal voice to teach it oh, yeah yeah you, you can it, it's like game it. over right there you know yeah. you have to have somebody that has developed themselves that identity to even talk about it yeah of how they got there and the power it has in the industry when you look at somebody's when i look at bill carmen's work well, look at your work. I don't need to see a name attached to it. I know yeah. you did. No, I know Sterling you know, Hunley or, uh, you know, Gary or Catherine Lamb or, you know, anybody that we've been talking about. That pow That is so powerful in our industry as an illustrator and in the in the gallery world. Uh, it, for, for an art director, it that's what they're thinking. When they're reading a story, they're thinking, oh, that's what I want. <laughs> and, you know, and and. and uh, it's extremely important for the the emerging the, the emerging illustrator and painter to develop that way. You know, speaking of voice, the reason I had you pause at this is because you know, for me, it's always been somewhat intimidating to do a commission for an artist that you admire, right? Was this Spies? What was the what's the title? Yeah, it's called that yeah, Spies, and so yeah, I, did, um, I read your I read your book, it, which was easy to read because it's two pages and then it's a whole bunch of pictures. Yeah, then it's just images. Yeah, that's the way I wanted. <laughs> But I did this for speaking of having a voice for uh, Paul Bonner. Yeah. So so you know it's sort of intimidating for me because I you know I love his work and he's a great guy, um, but he has a voice. You cannot mistake a Paul Bonner for anything else or anybody else for a Paul Bonner. So. Well, um, your work. Is it def definitely identifiable? Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't argue to, that. Yeah, I, I don't I think you have to worry about that. Uh, it was interesting going through and putting all this together, and I thought about like trying to figure out chronologically how it worked, and then I was like, no, forget that. That's going to be impossible. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I try to organize it by subject, and I was saying, no, forget that. I'm just going to like this is going to be like a. a 
really eclectic how it's all put together. And uh, well, that's how I did, you know, designed the book. You know, I thought about all those things. Should I do it, you know, chronologically? Should I, you know, do, you know, how should I design the whole thing? And, and but I didn't want it to be a retrospective. I didn't want it to be this, okay, you know, he's dying. And so here's his, here's his work. Um, <laughs> so I just, you know, I, I, I did it sort of um, instinct, instinctively, you know, just, I know I wanted to separate some of the sketches out, but I wanted to also pepper the, the book with some, you know, ideas and little quick little sketches that, you know, led to ideas. And um, This is like watching, uh, you know, it's just like one after the next. It's just one great picture after the next. I love, I love flipping through these. It's like watching fireworks and ooing and eyeing over the next. <laughs> hey, this piece I did at the Academy. It was a I, demo. I absolutely remember. And it's it's the one I had the most difficult time of finding good, a decent, it's even getting fuzzy at the size it is right now. It's, it doesn't yeah. have, it's a kind of low res. I don't remember if this one was in the book or not. I don't think so. Okay. I could be wrong, but I, I don't think so. Because I, I found it online. Oh. Well, these are, yeah, these are these quick little things that I do to keep myself sane. They're awesome. You know, most of my work is pretty intense, you know, getting into it, getting into it. And especially now that I have this eye issue that, you know, I have to back off sometimes and do these quick pieces where I'm just scratching and scraping and spitting and stuff and a lot of fun. Well, we, we, we've been talking about like career, what you've done and um, what you're doing now with teaching. When teaching's over, like, what do you get? I mean, I, I know change. But, I mean, I'll just have more time to, you know, to do my do my stuff, you know. Um I have you know, I've stopped traveling a lot, of course, because I haven't picked it up again. Actually, I'm kind of scared to travel again. I uh I'm not scared in the, in that way, but I, I just feel so inexperienced at it. <laughs> that I didn't what it, what it's like to go to like, the like, it was it was interesting, and if you come if you come to Kansas City again, uh, during COVID they built a new airport, and really? so yeah, so I didn't oh. uh, the, last, the last time I, I had traveled when uh, I went to New York to Sterling invited me in March seventh of two thousand twenty to present his tenth medal to them at the Society of Illustrators. Oh no! And so we went. I went. And that's when every that that's like the week that everything exploded. Sorry. <laughs> and, and so, but you know, I didn't and I came home and didn't, you know, saw the news and thought like, okay, missed that. And um, but during that time that from three years later, I didn't I didn't get on an airplane for three years. Yeah. I, I, I went to the airport the next time. It was a brand new airport. And it just wow. It, it, was, it was really it was really kind of an out of body experience because I've been you know, flying out of the same airport for the last 35 years. Um, well, you know, because of the Academy, because of Spectrum Live and, you know, Arnie and Kathy, I, I, Kansas City is sort of like a second home for me. You know, I, I've been there lots of times now and it's just, you know, I, I just looked so forward to going there and now I've had no reason to go there, you know, and so. Well, thanks, Bill. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Arnie and I are still here and Kathy. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, but yeah. But you know, Spectrum, the Spectrum Live was a, a really fun endeavor. Was. Enjoyed it. I know that that quarterly just is just coming out. Uh it's yeah, the they, third, I think the third one is coming out. Yeah. yeah. I just got a message I, uh, that it's supposed to be out soon. Yeah. I missed the book though, you know. Yeah. Oh, I missed the event, the book, everything. Yeah, the quarterly thing actually. He actually he's doing um a stories on monsters and uh he has uh rights in kind of leading it and he asked me if if he could borrow my father's Dracula to put into it. Oh, oh and yeah. I, and I thought sure, no problem. And then I did. Then I realized I didn't own it. And uh, I and I spent time looking for it, and I couldn't find it. And who had it? And I was having a conversation with Chris Payne. We were about to do our drawing hive thing together, and 
And I told him, I said, I'm really bummed out. I can't find it. And he starts laughing. I said, I said, do you, I said, do you know who have it, has it? And he turns his camera and it's hanging on in his studio. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I guess that's a good enough person to own it. Yeah. Right so <laughs> I got to get good film on it, which was great. Yeah. That's great. These things, these things are so wonderful. I, I these little these little they're little four by six inches, you know, and so they're just a just blast to do. I so I know, I know I mean you don't work large, no. uh, and so like what's sixteen by twenty? Yeah, sixteen by twenty is about the largest that I go now. I won't go much and, larger. And the uh, I think I asked you this question at the, in New York uh, the, about your gallery in New York. They they sell a lot of small pieces for you. Um, the the pieces. I, I were generally on the even on the small side for you maybe I don't know um, yeah I, yeah that, that I'm, I'm not that, not with that gallery anymore they shut down a few years ago um, during the pandemic I think uh, many did yeah I just I I pulled back a lot from the gallery thing other than a occasional group show where a friend is in it too or you know it's a fun theme that I like or I like the gallery. Um, I just don't, you know, uh, the gallery thing is, is, is changed a bit. And also, I just don't produce as work as fast as I used to. I used to be pretty prolific, you know, mm -hmm. but I've had to slow down because I've had this, I mentioned this eye problem, um, and it's slowed me down to at least half my normal pace. And well, is it so, something that's, that's repairable or is it going to? Um, it, it, can be the doctor keeps saying it's gonna it'll fix itself i thought it was macular degeneration at some point i was just freaked out um it has very similar symptoms but it just causes a distortion in one eye and so you know the focus i have to focus it almost by timing and so then i have to you know look up a lot and then look back down and um so it's yeah it's become difficult in that way, as far as time goes, the, the clarity is fine once I get focused. But um, so anyway, that's my my life right now. Hopefully I, that'll write itself. And I got a kick out of when I was looking for I was looking at the beginning to put type on one of your pieces to put your name on it as a title. And I was looking for a horizontal. You do not do very many horizontals. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't, you know, they're non-existent it's, except when you put like three pieces together. Well, your bat, the the Batman Joker one. I mean, yeah. there's 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 a few that 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 fit the bill for that, but this is just like just bombs going off one after the next. They're just so beautiful. Yeah, I, I, yeah. You know, it's funny. I do. I, I I think it comes from an early love of like book covers and things like that. That I that's, that's what I wanted to do when I was in school. I wanted to be a book cover artist, and I got out and did a few, and I. Just, discovered no oh, it's not completely what i want to do it's too the fickle it's too the industry is really fickle you know this is what's hot now on the covers and, and and i just i wanted to do this weird stuff and so um but it, i carried that habit over i do a lot of vertical work very few horizontal pieces and that's actually as far as online you know um horizontal is better right i mean right yeah, and so well, I don't know if it's better. It's just it's yeah, it's easier to design around. Right. Um, I think physically though, there's something about vertical pieces. I mean, I mean, I, I love vertical landscapes. Uh and yeah, I think, I think they feel bigger. I think they just have they have great impact to them. It, it's something of the designer in me too, you know, because you know, as, as a graphic designer, the my favorite jobs were posters. Um, right. And because that's the thing you can put on the wall, you know, as a graphic designer, you don't have many things you can put on the wall. There are, you know, books and magazines and things like that. And so um, I always love to do a poster. Uh, so. Well, I know that. Um, I Well, I'm sure you're aware of this and I'm sure my dad told you this, but when I, I presented the um, first showed him your book and, and it was, it was uh he was like a kid in a candy store. He just said, loved going through the book and the pictures. Yeah. And and his comment at the end of it was, "This guy can really design." And yeah. uh, and uh, you know that, that he he always referred to himself as he goes, "I'm a designer who paints." 
Um, yeah, it, it, it's exactly it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I can't believe you said that. That's incredible. Yeah, uh, he, he, he really was. And I look back and I think about all my favorite artists. You know, there's exceptions to everything, but they, they all, they all seem to study design at one point. Yeah, <laughs> no. The big, big message to anybody out there. Um, they just, you know, recently, uh, it's a student that we had, Marion Martinsick. Uh, just uh, sort of like winning awards like crazy at the Society of Illustrators the last couple of years. And um, she, she's a really good designer. She's a graphic designer is trying to figure out the illustration world. And my God, she figured it out. Um, but understood design. You know, it's like working with somebody like that. It's like, you know, <laughs> you just, she just exploded. Uh, you know, that's, yeah, absolutely. Well, I just, you know, uh, I, there are times in my life I've, you know, felt the, the fraud as a painter. You know, don't don't call me a painter. I'm not a painter. You know, um, I have a degree in painting, but I just don't feel like a painter. Um, I I feel almost more like a you know a, a drawer right. that uses paint. And um, but the design part of it is so, and that's what I hit with my students so hard. If you ask them, you know especially the first illustration class, you know, composition is king. You know, that, that that you tell a story with that, you can create an emotion without even, you know, telling a story. And you can create so much with just how objects are arranged and using shape and value and, you know, those very basic ideas that are the foundation, of, should be the foundation of everything that we do. Right. Well, you, uh, you know, Gary Kelly, and it's like after teaching with him a couple of years, I mean, he was... No, he was he was kind of like a, a slow build. He was very quiet and then, you know, always very, you know, he had his opinion. He would, you know, direction, but wasn't really vocal about it, wasn't super vocal. And one day we're in the studio and, and he said, I don't get what everybody's having such a problem with this. He said, he said, a picture is a collection of shapes. <laughs> He goes, yeah. let's start right there. <laughs> and, and and then he went into this whole dissertation on design and how we see things and um, the, the power of the silhouette. Um, you know, that was what my father was always preaching too. He he devised a, a, mecha, a an assignment that we still, that Catherine Lamb teaches in our very first illustration class. It's called the flat assignment. And when we first gave it at the Illustration Academy, we required the students to do it in cut paper. My father thought that would be best because they can paint the paper any color or value they want, but they're going to cut out the shape and they're going to glue it down and it's everything's going to be in flat shape. Mm -hmm. And each object can only have two values. The values can only be 30% apart. And I remember that. Yeah. And absolutely no rendering at all. Yeah. And, and, and it was so funny because, you, you know, you saw the students that came to the academy. They were very hungry. They were coming yeah, from yeah, yeah. Art design yeah. schools. And they they would get that assignment, and they were just and it was the first thing they got, and they would just be like, "Ah, oh, you got to be kidding me!" <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> they, they, yeah. they, wanted, they wanted to show oh. off the facilitation, and you know, so the, the, there's a title of a book, and I'm going to get it wrong probably, but close enough. The book isn't all that great, but the title is great. Seeing is forgetting the name of the thing you're looking at. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> so it's it, don't think of a thing as like a can think of it as a shape an object you know d you know forget about its name because that trips you up look at it as an abstract shape and things become much clearer right you know, shadows anything everything is shape and so well the p and, and, and i i see um artists of different you know different places because you know they, they come to the program to get better. And everybody comes in with different facilitation, different understanding. And every once in a while you see like this an anomaly who understands somehow they figured that shape design thing out. Yeah. Ster Sterling was one of them. Um, yeah. uh, Audrey Ben Jamison, who never came to our program, but I saw what she was doing when she was at Ring before she went to Ringling, when she was in high school, she got it. She, it was like, she saw picture making differently than other people saw it. She saw everything as a shape. She learned how to control it. And it was, I mean, she, you know, I, I, I can see that in her work. I can see yeah, that. Amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I told her, I said that she was showing her work. 
uh, of what she her portfolio to get into Ringling. Mm -hmm. And I and I said, you are already better than everybody there. Yeah, you know, (laughs) you should have gone to work. (laughs) She was. That's funny. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, there are a few standouts out there. You know, young, you know, Victo was Victo one of those I, Victo Watching I, her come up from a young, I, I just, yeah, I was so proud. It was so incredible to watch her progress, you know, and where she is now. Um, oh, I think that, I think that know. about Catherine Lamb right now, too. I mean, it just, uh, the work is so powerful, so well designed, so well composed. <laughs> I love all this. So that beautifully formed sphere that hovers around your shoulders produces all this stuff. And uh, it's it's very organic inside. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've, I've mentioned that in my bio too, that things go in, I take all this stuff in and I, you know, it bounces around and it comes out and fits and starts and, um, and then, you know, somehow it starts to come together on the surface. And, you know, there's always that ugly stage, too. And I, and I love that point. You know, I hate it and I love it where, you know, you're doing a painting and painting and things are cool. And then, then oh, you get to that point where it's, oh, my gosh, do I need to trash this or what do I need to do? But I always paint my way out of it. And, and then, you know, merging out of that. I love the whole process. That's the whole thing for me. You know, I, I, I got just a couple stumbling more questions. And stumbling and what's that? I just got a couple more questions for you. Um, okay. Before we go. And, and first one is, uh, who, who do you look at a lot now? Who are the artists that, that uh, inspire you now? Well, here's the thing. Um, I, I could, you know, constantly find new artists that I love, you know, but I always go back, you know, to, to, to breathe in, you know, the, my, my initial influences, but I love, you know, I, I love, you know, great storytellers, you know, Sean Tan, I, I really love, you know, his work and I keep revis- revisiting it. Um, I, there's some, um, you know, U- European comics have been more and more in my, you know, sites lately. Uh, I love the graphic novels that I've been, you know, reading some of the, you know, and I've been getting into that more lately too, because I haven't had time to, you know, read as many graphic novels and comics as I, you know, had. And what started me back up again was I picked up George's, you know, Enemy Ace. Uh, I had my my bookshelf. And I said oh, I'm going to reread that, and I took it out, and I just I almost cried. It was so pretty cool. amazing. Isn't it? Um, and, and and then I started, you know, picking up more and more and more, and you know, uh, Sergio Topi, you know that that. Um, he's just, you know, fantastic. Talk about a designer. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But it's, it's I, interesting. I, I look at Topi's work and I think of like illustration during the seventies and eighties. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I keep thinking, okay, well, well, was he checking out Bart Forbes? Or was Bart Forbes checking him out? I mean, you know, it's just like, you, you know, you know, they were aware of each other. You can't um, help, but, you know, see that yeah. yet be aware and let it seep in and, you know, yeah. uh, affect you um but you know i keep going back to the guys the people's work who whose work looks nothing like mine that like alan cober i Gosh. can't shake his work it's just so and chris always been so incredible to me what he can do with the line i mean there are equivalent guys today that are you know the line you know like john cuneo and barry blitt and you know Cinderella. No, Shardello, those guys that, that you know can handle the line just like crazy. Yeah. But there was something emotional and emotive about Cobra's line that Yeah. Well you 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 were probably a big Henry fan too, right? I mean Oh, absolutely. In fact, yeah. I almost got him to come out to the school to do a presentation. We were talking about because we both fly fished, you know. And I said, I got a place I want to take. And he said, Great, let's do it, you know. And I don't remember what happened, what fell through, but we couldn't make it happen. Um, but oh my gosh, no, he is one yeah, of the great just, masters of all time. Right. It, and wonderful man too. Just amazing. Yeah. Um, 
very, I, I think his work holds up so well still now, very contemporary feeling to me, you know. Um, I'm actually going to, uh, my next one of these is with Leslie Cobert. And uh, that's the prelude to doing one on her father. And oh, we're going to wow. together, father. I'll make, I'll that make, you, great. I'll make sure you, you are aware of it when we're done. I appreciate that. Yeah. Les, Leslie's a great artist in her own right. Very good. Yeah. I, I just love, I love a lot of the young people, you know, coming up too. You know, I, I get excited by it still. That's, I guess that's how I can tell I'm not too old to do this is I get, you know, excited by, a lot of young artists coming up and um, doing things. And so, you know, it's, I'm alive, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, there's just a couple of more uh, images I want to get through. Okay. But I'm going to ask you, do you have anything like going on or something you want to promote, something you want to talk about before we get out of here? Oh, no, not not currently. I, you know, I will when the book comes out, you know, the the limited edition sort of deluxe book. Um, but right now I'm just focused on doing, you know, I, I, I've really gotten into you know, doing private commissions lately. Um, you know, of course, I like doing my own thing, but sometimes having a, some kind of parameters opens doors for me creatively. Right. You know, um, you know, getting a couple of words or, you know, an idea thrown at me. Um, so right now I'm just immersed in that um, private commissions. And, you know, that means I don't have to share the 50% with the gallery. <laughs> so I've been, you know, doing that and, and actually really enjoying. It. Um, and a lot of these theme things, you know, uh, so, uh, this is, you know, an Alice in Wonderland series here. Right. Um, I like, you know, working in those series and I like working, you know, in the themed things. The very first image, you know, with the uh, with my name on it um, from Del Leo Guillermo del Toro, the, that was his, the, what is it, the Gray Man or something from Pan's Labyrinth? That was a theme-based show in, you know, um, in LA. And so, it was based around, you know, an opening of that film. So, yeah, I know there's like there's several galleries out there that do that now that are, that are yeah. giving prompts and artists that I I know um, Ashley Lovett does a lot of that and you know it, yeah I used to do a lot more I you know um, started <laughs> off with I think it was Maurice Sendak thing maybe and um, but you know I to do my Harry Potter series for a client, you know, uh, and, and it's just, people seem to like seeing what I do with Harry Potter or Tank Girl you know, or Batman. Um, right. uh, the first, another Harry Potter thing, the first theme-based commission I did a, with comics was a Batgirl. And, you know, the guy said, I want you to do Batgirl for me. So, well, I don't do comics, you know, I, I, I don't do comic book characters and things. I don't want comics. I want you. I want your version of Batgirl. And I did it and I loved it. And it turned out really great. <laughs> and so I've done a whole bunch of them since, you know, people well, have seen them. It, it, it's, it's nice sometimes to have, to have parameters. Um, yeah. It, 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 you know, it, it gives, you know, get up i mean my, my my days are spent a lot of my days are spent thinking about what i have to do what 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 is it that i'm going to do and looking sometimes it's good it's good to have uh, be pushed and prompted so explain the book one more time because you did you just barely glossed over it you're doing a big tabletop book now no 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 i just did a, a job for easton press uh it's a it's a limited edition deluxe you know um illustrated novel so Ulysses oh, oh. by James Joyce. Oh, okay. All right. That's what you talked about earlier. Great. Yeah. Um, when is it due to come out? Uh, well, it was going to come out uh, earlier this year, but they had to push it back because um, I, I think they got a stack up of books, you know, to, to release. And so, um, so I don't know the exact re release date anymore. Um, once I do, I'll let everybody know, but well, that was one of my toughest but most rewarding processes i mean i look forward to seeing you've ever read ulysses 
um, I don't know if I'm capable. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's a tough, tough read. Well, um, I'm going to leave it at this and say, Bill, you are a master. Absolutely oh. amazing. And thank you for spending the afternoon with me. It was well worth my time spending a few days looking at, at your work and uh, immersing myself in it. And I hope that everybody else enjoys it as much as I do. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, John. Thank you. I enjoyed you're, it. You're amazing. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> I'll right. try to stay alive. <laughs>